All right, let's go over example three this time. Um, first, let's look at this definition box. The average rate of change of y or f of x with respect to x. As x changes from x1 to x2 is a ratio of the change in output to the change in input. They're basically just describing the slope formula. Okay, delta y divided by delta x. Change in y divided by change in x. To find that change, we subtract. So the numerator is just y2 minus y1. And the denominator is just going to be x2 minus x1. And, and you guys know that f of x can be written as y. So if you're finding an output for x1, um, the, the y1 can be written as f of x1 and f of x2 is same as y2. So they're just rewriting this slope formula, the average rate of change formula, uh, in terms of uh, using the function notation. That's all it is. That's all it is. And they just can't, the, the x1 and x2 cannot be equal to each other because if they are equal, the denominator will be zero. Um, so let's see what we're doing here. So for find f for f y equals f of x equals x squared plus 1, they want you to find the rate of change as x changes from 1 to 3. So what they are giving you is that x is 1, and they're not telling you y is 3. They're giving you the second x value is 3. What we need to do is we need to first figure out their y values because if you want the slope or average rate of change, we need y2 minus y1, right? So to find the y values, I'm going to plug in these x values into the function they gave us. The function is what? Uh, f of x equals x squared plus 1. So all you need to do is just plug in those x values in there. So if I plug in 1, I will get 1 squared plus 1, which is 2. So when x is 1, y is 2. Let's plug in 3 into the function. That will be 3 squared plus 1. 10. Okay? Um, so once you find your x, uh, y values for both x1 and x2, we're ready to do the slope formula. Um, slope, or the average rate of change, is y2 minus y1. So let me put 10 minus 2 divided by x2 minus x1. So let me do 3 minus 1 in the bottom. And we need to simplify this. That is 8 divided by 2. So the average rate of change is simply 4. So the tricky part is that we need to first figure out the y value. But once you find the y value, it's just back to the slope formula. So let's try one more, OK? As x changes from 1 to 2. So the first x value is 1. The second x value is 2. Um, we need to find their y values. Remember, we did one before. Uh, one, if you plug in one, f of one was just two. So I can just use that number, but I need to now plug in two into this function, two into this function to find the y value. Ready? So that is two squared plus one. That is five. Okay. Now we're ready to find the average rate of change. Average rate of change is y2 minus y1, 5 minus 2 on the numerator. And in the denominator, I need to do x2 minus x1, 2 minus 1. So final answer will be 3 over 1. Well, if I simplify that, it's going to be just 3. So the average rate of change is, I mean, that, that's what you're going to have to do. If you don't have the y values, plug in those x values to find the y values so that you can use them, okay? It's kind of an awkward place for me to stop, so I will do maybe the first part of difference quotient. Um, now, as you can see, the equation that we used, that's not a linear function. That's a quadratic function, right? So what we were doing is this. We were looking at a quadratic function of x squared plus 1. So the graph will look something like this look something like that and what we were doing was as x goes from 1 to um, 2 what we were doing was we were finding the slope of a line that goes through those two points on that curve okay 
you know, quadratic function do not have a slope. Quadratic function is a is a parabola. A linear functions have slope. So what we did was we picked two points on this line, on this curve, and figured out their average rate of change. So the picture is pretty similar down here. Um, now we develop a notation for average rate of change that does not require subscripts. So instead of writing x2, y2, you know, x1, y1, all those subscripts, instead of x1, let's write x as just x. And instead of x2, right, hold on, we're going to keep x1 as just x, okay? Instead of x2, what we're going to do is we're going to say that x2 is just a little bit away from the first x, okay? A little bit away. We moved it to the right or it could be to the left. But what we're going to do is we're going to just add a little bit from the original value and that's how we're going to write the second x value. Here, h stands for how much you moved. Um, so for example, if your x1 was, I'm just making it up, okay? If x1 is 5, and if x2 is, you know, 8, then x2 can be written as what? 5 plus 3, right? Um, 8 is 3 away from 5, so h will be 3. So h just represents the horizontal distance between inputs x1 and x2. It's the horizontal, and oh, here, here you go. Think of, you know, let me highlight the whole thing. Think of H as a usually small horizontal distance between inputs X1 and X2. So another example, if my X1 is, say, 55, and if H is, making up a random one, H is 2, then X2 will be 55 plus 2, 57. H is just small distance between the first x value and the second x value, okay? Um, let's see. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just write the slope formula again, but we're going to call this difference quotient, okay? Difference quotient equals. Now, I'm going to highlight the order pairs that we will use to find those difference quotients. Um, here's the first order pair, okay, and here's the second order pair, okay? So let's do the slope formula using those two um, highlighted points. You know what? Let me go ahead and draw boxes around them. So these are my two points. These are my two points. Um, on the numerator, it's the same thing, right? We're going to have to do y2 minus y1, okay? What are their y values? Y values are f of x plus h and f of x. I need to subtract those two on top of the fraction. f of x plus h minus f of x, okay? All over. Now, the denominator is a difference of the x values. I need to do x plus h minus x. x plus h minus x. There's nothing I can really do on the numerator. I'm just going to copy it down exactly the same. But the denominator, I can cancel out this positive x and this negative x. The only thing left is just x. So this is a difference quotient formula. Um, it's nothing more than a slope formula. Really, it's just, and they call it difference quotient. Why? Because we're finding differences, right? We're subtracting, we're finding differences. And quotient just means a fraction, like something divided by answer to a division, something divided by something else. So um, you do not have to memorize um, this difference quotient formula, but I think you know where it came from now. We're just writing the slope formula using function notation instead of subscripts. It's the same exact thing. So um, keep that in mind. We're going to find the difference quotient now. Now, I know you guys did difference quotient back in um, Math 161 probably stayed with linear and maybe quadratics. Okay, I think we have an example where we have to do the difference quotient of square root, square root. And those will be great problems for us to review some important algebra skills. I'm excited. All right, let me maybe just do one um, slightly different problem. All right, um, I'll do example four and I will stop the video and come back and do the rest. All right, here is example four. 
For f of x equals x squared, they want you to find the difference quotient when x is 5 and h is 0.1. So, um, well, I'll, I'll copy down the difference quotient formula here. Difference quotient formula is f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So we're going to just plug in everything um, that we're given. Um, so if I plug in x and h in here, I will get f of 5 plus 0 0.1 minus f of 5. That's the numerator, right? All divided by h. h is 0 0.1. Let me simplify this a little bit. Um, f of 5 plus 0.1 is 5.1 minus f of 5. And I'm going to divide that difference by 0 0.1. All right, let me figure out what f of 5.1 is up here. What is f of 5.1? That means I need to plug in 5.1 into the function. And what is the function? The function is x squared. So I simply need to square 5.1. All right, I'm typing that into my calculator. 5.1 times 5.1, or 5.1 squared, I got 26.01. Okay, what about f of 5? Well, that's just going to be 5 squared. I don't need a calculator for that one. That's just going to be 25. So I found what f of 5.1 is and f of 5 is. Let's plug them in. So I will get 26.01 minus 25 divided by 0 0.1. So if I do 26.01 minus 25, I got 1.01 for the numerator, and the denominator is still that number. So let's divide. Last step is to divide that by 0 0.1, and the final answer is 10.1. Okay, so we found, uh, we used the difference quotient formula to evaluate um, the difference quotient. And I don't know if I really like these examples, just plugging in into the formula, but um, it's, I guess good practice problem to look at the difference quotient. But I think I will ask you questions like number five or number six more on your exam than these ones. but. You may see this type of problem in your homework, so it's good that we practice these. All right, let's do another one. f of x plus h minus f of x, and we're going to divide that by h. That is the difference quotient formula, right? Now, they said h can't be equal to 0, and look at them. Oh, they're getting really, really close to 0, but that's still not 0, so we can still use it. All right, let's plug in everything we know. f of x is 5 h is 0 0.01 minus f of 5 and we're going to divide that by h which is 0 0.01 i know f of 5 this is 25 but i will need to figure out what f of 5.01 is okay that is 5.01 squared let me type this into my calculator, okay? 5.01 squared is 25.1001. So this whole difference quotient will turn into 25.1001 minus 25, because f of 5 is 25, over 0 0.01. Let's subtract on the numerator. If I subtract, I will get 0 0.1001, and I will divide that by 0 0.001. All right, and now we're going to divide um, on a scientific calculator, 0 0.001. When I type this in, I got 100.1. Okay, so yeah, it would be nice to look at the graph and everything, but 
what's going on? What's going on? We are getting closer and we're making H getting closer and closer to zero. As you can see how H here was 0.1 and H here is 0 0.001. Um, and in section 1.4 next Tuesday for our class meeting, we will use limit. We're going to say, hey, let's send H to zero. Okay. And that's how we will define derivative. Okay. Right now we're looking at slope of two points, slope of a secant line. As we get these two points infinitely close to each other, we're going to be looking at slope of a tangent. I'm so excited. I should talk, stop talking about it, but we'll talk about that next Tuesday in our meeting. But I'm going to go ahead and stop this video so that you guys can, you know, write down the rest of it. But I will be back to record the rest of it very soon.